<laughs> G'day. Just another quick video on me assembling um, one of my firm zillas for brew day. I was uh, changing the bulb on it. My bulb was one of the original ones. Um, I just thought I'd change it to one of the new style. So I thought I'd do a video and give you a few hints and tips uh, and might help to remember uh, how to undo them when you need to. I rarely undo mine totally. It's probably, oh geez, I've gone 12 months without undoing the whole lot. If I think I need to, if I ever got an infection, I've never, I don't really get infections. I shouldn't say that, touch wood. But yeah, if you need to undo it or you want to undo it all the time, I think these steps will help you. I'm going to use this uh, silicon spray, food grade silicon spray. You know, it's made of the same stuff your, your cream stuff is, or your gel stuff. Um, you might be more comfortable with the gel. Uh, I've been fine using this uh, lately. Um, on your, it's the same sort of stuff, you know, but the gel stuff will sit thicker. This is only really thin. So if you think you need the gel, use the gel. But uh, it's all the same methods rather than, other than that. Uh, let's go have a look. And I'm just butting in here as usual. But as you can see, all my footage was out of focus. So what I did, I had a, I have two Firmzillas, so I did it to my other Firmzilla as well. So if you sort of see it swap between Firmzillas, between the start and the end, that's why. It was giving me a headache looking at that out of focus footage. <laughs> Cheers. So firstly, of course, make sure everything's clean. Check that the seal's intact. There's a seal just there. You'll have to take them apart, the rubber bit and that bit, if they are together, they fit in easier. It's pretty simple, these bits. Put the rubber piece on, line them up, slide it into the bottom. But this is where it gets a little bit different. The most, I use this spray on silicon. And, you know, you don't probably have to put that much on, but it works for me. You've got to remember that this first thread is a reverse thread. So anti-clockwise to screw it down. So of course to undo it, it has to turn that way. A little bit of alcohol spray onto a rag just to clean up any dirt or grease from your fingers or even silicon spray. And I purchased this grip tape just off eBay. It's for skateboards and it has adhesive glue on one side, which is really handy. I'll leave a link in the description where you can get it. Cut it in the shape of an arrow. You can make these much longer if you like. And stick them on. Uh, even though these are small, these ones, uh, it just gives you a real good purchase or grip if you happen to need it. It also reminds you which way to undo it. Everything I do just hand type, like you see me do here. If you're worried about uh, overspray, you can use something like a bit of paper or whatever you have that you can put into the hole. Look, I haven't worried too much about it as you saw before, but you know, some people might. And the next section, the valve, goes on clockwise, normal thread. Again, just hand tight. And again, cut some strips. Give it a clean up with some alcohol again. Stick them on. Do the same with the collection jar. That goes on clockwise too. Just hand tied like that is all I ever do it. And that turns the same way as the valve. It just helps to remind you which way to turn it and the grip tape really gives you some grip. So the last thing I want to mention is when you're doing undoing the jar, support this piece. You can hold the handle or have another, you know, some sort of grip on that while you undo this. Because if you start playing with this and not supporting this, you might be inadvertently tightening it, 
tightening or undoing that. When you're trying to undo this bit, you need to have gas in here. That'll force pressure down on the inside to stop the inside from spinning. And you should be able to undo this. Uh, which way is the arrows going? That way, see? And you won't even get leaks at this stage with pressure in there. But we'll do that back up so I don't forget. But as I said, just remember, when you're undoing this bit, support this bit. Don't hold it up here. You can put it, the handle against the stand or something, but make sure this is supported. And you shouldn't have any worries. We'll just let most of the gas out, because it is pressurised up to 10. If you're trying to protect the beer, of course, you don't let it all out so air gets in. But if you're still hearing that pressure, you know air's not getting in, still CO2 coming out. But you don't mess around here. Close that. And you can see there that I have to turn it that way to get it off. Now, I probably shouldn't have used this container because I can't get my hands on it. Hang on, I'll get something else. Now I should be able to do this by hand. If you see dropping, that's because it's um, condensation. It's quite hot in here today and this has been in the fridge chilling down. So a good way is to use the stand. If you don't want to use the stand, so that stops that spinning. You could use your, um, your grip tool thing. Or hopefully, I should just be able to do this by hand. Maybe. Yeah, there we go. And this has been through a whole ferment, hasn't leaked. And there we go. That was just done by hand. Whoop. Bit of dry hop there, NIPA. But there you go, that made it very easy. So you'd, I'd take that away, and as you've seen in other videos, spray that with some sanitizer if you want to. Uh, clean, it, clean it up a bit, and then put your clean jar on. Or empty that, clean it, put your hops in there, do what you want to do. Oh, that smells good. Mm -mm. It shouldn't be too hard. Do it up by hand, undo it by hand. So now the Famzilla is together, I simply put, well, it's usually about four litres of star sand. You'll see me use a two litre Coke bottle there, two litres of water, three mil of star sand or stellar sand or whichever version you're using. But I use about four litres just because I have my uh, line for my float cut pretty short so I don't pick up junk from the bottom. I always spray a little bit of sanitizer around the top, makes me feel good. Just whack the lid on. There's no point over tightening that lid, I'll say it again, because it just sort of holds down. Over tightening's not gonna do anything. And then I put about 12 psi or 15 psi, whatever I'm thinking of brewing with, into the firmzilla just to check for leaks. I look down the bottom. And we are looking good. It's a bit hard with that shadow there, but you can see there's no drips there. Now I'll leave this sitting here for, you know, 10, 15 minutes while I'm mucking around, just to make sure, but I'd say we're looking pretty good. Then we turn it over and check the top. I've never had an issue with the top, as long as you've got your carb caps connected properly. And again, I'll leave that there for 10 minutes, see what happens. Again, we've got nothing there. And if you get any leaks, undo it, do it up again, test. But I'm, I'm satisfied now, I'll brew in this. That'll do till uh, I put this brew in. So after 10 minutes, I uh, flipped it over again. And I just noticed that the pickup tube wasn't sitting correctly. I, it's the first time I was using these filters on the end of the pickup line. I had used them in the stainless keg amenta before, but you can't really see in there. But there was a problem with this one here. It just wasn't sitting right. It was like the ball uh, was connected to the bottom of the filter, where it should have been connected to the top. Now, a lot of people sort of solve this by putting stainless uh, weights, like uh, washers, on the end of the line, and that helps it hold it down underwater. Just a quick tip on these filters. What I've noticed is these tubes, uh, these silicon tubing, um, 
they tend to have a bend in them, especially these stiffer ones. There's thinner ones and stiffer ones. <laughs> and if you try to fight the bend, that's where you're going to end up in trouble. What I mean by that is if, it, if it's naturally bending one way, it only has to be a little bit, then it's going to float like that and your, your cage should be up the right way. If I was to turn this cage upside down and, it, and the tube tends to bend that way and the float wants to float up, it's all going to go the wrong way around. It's just going to make it more difficult. And I've seen pictures of people, um, even without the cage, sometimes have that issue with these, these thicker pipes. Like, I really like this thicker one compared to the original one. Um, but yeah, so just go with the flow, <laughs> if you know what I mean. There's no point fighting the natural bend. Whether you turn it up here or you, you just twist twist the cage round, because you want, of course, the loops in the cage to be at the top so that the float doesn't have to fight against it. Just in case people didn't understand, we'll go over that again quickly. If you've got a natural bend in the tubing, have it so it goes and makes the attachment for the float on your filter point to the top. If they point to the bottom, then that'll be, that has the tendency to face down like that but the float will still be trying to float and it'll sort of sit like that. I mean, it'll still work, but it'll work a lot better if it's sitting nice like that and this whole thing sits under the wort or beer by that stage when you're trying to get it out. Cheers. That's sitting much better now. You can see the it's sitting below the ball. Just check that. That didn't happen to me last time, but obviously I was lucky. Also, while we're here, I like to run some line through the, some sanitizer through the pickup tube. That way we know it's all sanitized, you know, inside the tube and everything. All right, so that's it. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, share. Thank you to my patrons. Uh, have a good day. Brew day here, if you can hear the kettle in the background. I know, don't know if you can. Brewing a big NIPA, which will be another video. Oh, I don't know which one's going to be uploaded first. But uh, cheers. Thanks.